So good morning. It's good to have you here this morning. Pastor Eric is supposed to tell me when my time's up because we got to figure out how to put a timer on that, but I'll just preach until she yells at me. It's still early, so we're good. The Patriots don't play till next week, I think, right? All right. So when we were talking about doing a worship service uh, today, an extended time of worship, we were honestly thinking there wasn't going to be many people here, but we have visitors and the church is pretty full, so we appreciate that. So there, we shouldn't have negative thinking, right? So God help me with my stinking thinking, right? So oh, it's good to see a lot of the Portuguese here today. Paz Senhor! Glory, hallelujah. All right, good. So we're, I wanted to talk about how we fight our battles, right? Michael W. Smith sang it. I don't know that he wrote it. I don't know that anybody ever really knows who wrote that song, but everybody and their mother has sang it. This is how I fight my battles, right? You know the song. But it's always just kind of thinking about it with worship. So today I want to just talk about how we fight our battle because I believe this church is in a battle for its life. I believe some of you are in a battle for your family, for your business, for your kids. And today I just want to give us three simple things that I believe will help us battle. Battle, period. Deb had to say, put the period there, Pastor Rob. Listen, I'm trying to get my, my sea legs underneath me, preaching every week for the next month or actually the next five or six weeks. I'm excited. So bear with me, amen? All right, praise God. So how do we fight our battles that you face? How do you gear up to go to war when sometimes the very voice inside of your head is telling you you can't do it? You're not good enough. When we've come here and we tried new things, we had naysayers saying, you can't do that. It won't work. We've tried it before. But we can't be afraid to try things and fail. I was at the park the other night with Mark Conrad. He goes to the Journey Church. Shout out to the Journey for lending us this good-looking drummer, Nate Botello, <laughs> whose roots are here in this church. And his, his grandparents are back there, blessed to see him in church and his beautiful family today, wherever they are. I was going somewhere with that. Oh, so I was at the park. Mark Conrad said, we tried to do such and such a thing in the park. We had it all set up, but nobody showed up. And I was like, oh, really? They had something at the Corky Road Club. I saw you kind of like, huh? It was at the Corky Road Club. They set it up. It was in the winter time. But he said to me, Pastor Rob, we still got to try to do something. And in this series that we're going to start preaching next week, one of the things we say is to, do, to reach people that nobody's reaching, you have to do things that nobody is doing. So it's going to challenge us to think outside of these church walls, but if it brings people to the kingdom of God, I think it's worth it. But how do we fight our battles? For me, getting back, staying in ministry was a challenge. Because, see, I didn't have the perfect Christian road. Many, many of you have heard my testimony. Some of you haven't. will be shocked this morning as I share a little bit. But I, wasn't, I was the perfect Christian boy. I grew up in New Hampshire. Everything was great. All of a sudden, I ended up in jail. Okay, a lot of stuff happened for that to happen, but I don't need to tell you all those details. I'll, I'll have a conversation with anybody, but for the sake of time, I felt unworthy. I ended up in a cell, solitary confinement, banging my head on the walls, but God was still there for me. But when I got out of jail, I found a church, one church in all of New England cared enough and loved on me. It was the New England Dream Center. Happened to be where I met my beautiful wife, Erica. But I sat there week after week after week, just feeling like a failure, feeling like, oh, I was called of God and now I'm shunned by God. I'm shunned by the church. I would sit in the back corner in my shorts and my t-shirt, I wanted to blend in, and this song would come on, it's going to be worth it. I'm not a singer, I'm not a singer, but I love to sing. It's going to be worth it all. And then she happened to be singing one of those weeks, is wrap me in your arms, wrap me in your arms. And I just remember feeling the presence of God give me this bear hug. And he whispered in my ear, you're still calm. You might have fallen, but you're getting back up. So I fought that battle in worship, which is one of the ones we're going to talk about. 
But where are you? What is your battle this morning? Are you stressed out with your family, with your significant other, with your kids, with your boss, with your neighbor, with your pastor? Whatever the battle is, there are three things that I think we can do together to fight that battle. The first one is fight your battle with Scripture. The great thing about the Word of God and wireless microphones is I can get my water and my phone. It's back in the day, I know when Paula was younger, she probably carried around the big King James Bible, right? You, brought, you carried around that sword of the Spirit. Some of you still carry that Bible around, which is great, but guess what? You can carry it right here on your iPhone or the better yet Samsung Galaxy, which is better. Galaxy is better than Samsung, I mean Apple, except I do like my iPad, but that's neither here nor there. The great thing about technology is you can carry the Word of God with you 24-7. You wake up in the middle of the night, you can pop open your phone and you can go in the Word of God. You're on the subway train going into Boston, pop open the Word of God. You have no excuse in this day and age to not be able to read the Word of God. The Bible says, I don't even know why I have notes because I'm not even looking at them. The Bible says that Jesus quoted Scripture. He said to Satan, it is written, and he would say stuff. But how could Jesus say it's written if he didn't read it? The same thing with David. David quoted the Levites in the Old Testament. They quoted scripture. The power of speaking scripture is talked about in James because it says this power of death and life in the tongue. So when you're a negative Nancy or a killing Karen and you like to speak death, the opposite is true too. You could speak life. Instead of being negative about the church and about the pastor and about the worship team and about all of that, speak life. And watch the difference in your life, in our church life, in your family. But you can't quote it if you don't know it. The YouVersion app is awesome. If you want to do a one-on-one -on -one with Pastor Rob, I will do a devotional with you. I'm doing one with a bunch of men, doing one with individuals here. I'm doing one with my wife, with my kids, with my family, people from other churches. I don't care. The more of the word of God, the better. Sometimes I get behind, but you can do it. So if you want a devotional that you can do, sign up for the YouVersion app. I don't have stock in it, but I promote it, just like I promote Aquapana Water. You see, the Bible is a living book unlike any other book in existence. When it's read, quoted, taught, and studied, the readers and listeners aren't just hearing the words of a person, but they are hearing the inspired word of God. I think we forget, well, God doesn't speak to me. Have you read the word of God? Because most of the time it's not audible, only a couple times did he come to my room and talk to me. It's a good story, I'll tell you another time. But for the most part, it's in the word of God. And if you're not in it, you can't hear it. Think of this as the sword of the spirit. Pull it out of your back pocket. Don't just go on Facebook. Go on the Bible app and read the word of God. So a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Garbage in, garbage out. Word of God in, word of God out. Amen? We can fight our battles with the scriptures. Romans 10, 17 says, Faith comes from hearing, and hearing by what? The word of God. The Bible might not cover every situation you will face, but in its pages you will find hope, joy, peace, love, grace, forgiveness, Stories of lament, anger, death, and many more themes that will help you face them. In 2 Corinthians, Paul was talking about a struggle that he had. Now, theologians don't know what the struggle was, but I know I want to take a little detour and read a paraphrased version that might not, not everybody might not like it, but it's a paraphrase of it in the message. It says this, because of the extravagance of those revelations, and so I wouldn't get a big head, I was given the gift of a handicap to keep me in constant touch 
with my limitations. Satan's angel did his best to get me down. What he did, in fact, was push me to my knees. Pause there. When you have that stress, when you have that doubt, when you have that anger, when you have those situations, let it push you to your knees. When you feel hopeless, that's okay. Because apart from him, we can't do it. Because but God, I wouldn't be here today. And I know many of us can testify because if we didn't have God, we wouldn't be here either. Picking up, it says, no danger then of walking around high and mighty. At first, I didn't think of it as a gift and begged God to remove it. Three times I did that, and then he told me this. This is what God told Paul. My grace is enough. It is all you need. My strength comes into its own in your weakness. So when you fall, that is when God can be glorified. When you're stressed, God can be in that moment. So when you get stressed out, turn to him. He will turn your mourning into laughter. He will turn your crying into praise and laughter. But if we don't communicate with God, how can that happen? You see, the Bible says that we are friends of God. Did you know God wants to be your best friend? But how can you be friends when you don't communicate? If Trot and I didn't talk back and forth during the week, I wouldn't know how he's doing, he wouldn't know how I'm doing, we wouldn't be able to chat. You can't have a friendship with somebody if you don't talk. So having friendship with God and being best friends means you gotta talk a little bit more than you talk to someone you see just on Sundays. Yet, that's how we treat God sometimes. I want to ask for you to raise your hands, but maybe today's the first day you even thought of God all week. It has to be day in, day out, 24-7. Further down in the verse, it says, Once I heard that, I was glad to let it happen. I quit focusing on the handicap and began appreciating the gift. It was a case of Christ's strength moving in my weakness. Now I take limitations in stride with good cheer. These limitations that cut me down to size, abuse, accidents, oppositions, bad breaks, I just let Christ take over. And so the weaker I get, the stronger I become. I've been on a big kick. It's kind of two opposites, the message and then the amplified. I love the amplified lately. Verse 10 says this, so I am well pleased with weakness, with insults, with distress, with persecutions, and with difficulties for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak in my human strength, then I am strong, truly able, truly powerful, truly drawing from God's strength. Can you say that during your week you're drawing from God's strength? You have that ability today. See, I took my weakness and my unqualifiedness when I felt like I wasn't worthy, and I surrendered them to God. I said, God, you know what? If I'm still called, then you got to do it. And God told me, and he reminded me. He goes, you are called. You are chosen. You are forgiven. You are anointed. And God wants you to know that today. You are forgiven. You are anointed. You are called. Everyone in this room is set apart as a royal priesthood. This church can't survive without you. It is not just up to this worship team and the pastors to bring people into the church. It's your job too. It's your job to be in the word of God. It's your job to pray. It's your job to fight the battle for your life and also for this church, which we'll talk about in a couple seconds. Remember when the father of lies begins to tell you that you are too messed up for God to care or to come to your rescue, remember Romans 8.38. What can separate us from the love of God? Say it with me now. Nothing. Oh, you guys. What can separate you from God? Nothing. The love of God. Granted, if you sin and you walk away, that's a different story, but that's a different message. First thing was fight your battles with Scripture. The second one, fight your battles with prayer and worship. Now, I've said this before, joking around, but I think about it all the time. 
Imagine you're at work and your coworker does something and you just want to start not praising God, the opposite. But imagine if the worship team popped out of the janitor's closet and just started playing, Lord, you are good and your mercy is endureth forever, right? How cool would that be? You're driving down the road in Fall River and people cut you off like they always do in this city. They pop out of the ashtray, Lord, you are good. That's why we need to have a CD so you can put it in. That's not feasible, right? But we can carry around that spirit of worship all the time. During my time, it was that song, Lord, you are good. Because no matter what, when I had a bad week and got a bad email or something happened, Lord, you're still good. His goodness didn't change just because someone else's attitude changed. You have to remember, God is the constant. He is good. So fight your battles with prayer and worship. David saying, I love David. David is crazy. I wish we had a David in our church. I'm still praying in a David and a Jonathan here. Oh, we got a Jonathan. All right. Psalms 30, 11, verse 12 in this translation says this. Have you ever did this? Have you ever done this before? This is David. You did it, God! You changed my wild lament into whirling dances. You ripped off my black morning band. You decked me with wildflowers. I'm about to burst with song. I can't keep quiet, God, my God. I can't thank you enough. But how often does God answer your prayers and you're like, thanks, God. Bless you. But when are we ever that excited when God does something? Because whether you know it or not, God does something for you every single day. Did you wake up today? Did you wake up in a bed? Because guess what? I meet people all week long that wake up on the sidewalk. And some of them have better attitudes than people in church. I'm not pointing at fingers. It's not even about our church. It's about someone else's church. Find whatever your song is. There's going to be a song that you cry out and sing and hold on to it. Jesse, when I first met him, he'd be doing wiring up here, and he'd be blasting K-Love, bebop into Toby Mac, or whatever was on back then. So long ago, five years, four years. Toby, no Toby Mac? Still Toby Mac. Jonathan likes, Jonathan and uh, other people like to, you know, rock out a little more. Shakira likes, uh, you know, other stuff. I'm getting lost in it. But find your song of worship. Maybe it's a hymn. Maybe you're old school. The old rugged cross. Listen, I grew up on all that, and I love it. And we're going to do some throwback Sundays. Or you go old school. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll, right? Find whatever song will get you out of that funk and worship him. You can worship him in the morning. You can worship him in the noontime. My favorite time is to worship him in the shower. I sound amazing in the shower. Seriously. Like the acoustics. Pastor Erica sometimes is Snapchatting outside of the bathroom and sending it to people just so she can hear me sing. Find your song. Shane and Shane is one of the most phenomenal worship groups out there. Two worship leaders. They put out a CD that's called Wor uh, Worship the Word, Worship in the Word. The, all the worship songs are completely scripture. You're singing scripture the whole time. When I prepared this message, I just had it on repeat. Combining the scripture and the worship is even more powerful. Prayer goes hand in hand. You can do them together. But sometimes there's a situation, Mark 9, 29, the disciples asked, but God, how come we couldn't do this situation? He said, there's going to be a certain situation, but by prayer and fasting. Now, maybe you don't know what fasting is. Fasting is the, well, everybody should know medically, right? You have to fast before you go do blood work. But there's a spiritual component. When you give of something specifically to spend time with God or specifically for a purpose, God honors that and God blesses that. And there's power that drives out demons in that. So when's the last time you fasted for something, somebody, or your church? I don't know my time. How am I doing? Good? A good example, we moved to Lynn, Massachusetts. 
was probably a mistake, but we won't say there was a mistake in ministry. We went to take a pastoral position in Lynn. I moved into the apartment before Pastor Erica got there, and I don't know, there was something wrong in that apartment. I think I've told the story to a few people. One night I was sleeping there by myself. It sounds weird. I woke up in the closet. So I was like, all right, it's weird. I slept, walked, and woke up in the closet. The next night, I woke up by falling onto the coffee table. I was like, what is going on? So I was walking room to room, and I felt an oppression in this house. Then I found out prior to us moving in, it was used as a halfway house or a sober house, and some of the people that were there were just not godly people. So I was like, God, what am I going to do? This is the apartment that we have. So I went around and I anointed every doorpost. I'm starting really spiritual now. And then I put on speakers in every room and I put on the International House of Prayer. They do worship 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I put it on there and I drove back to Worcester to go see Erica or whatever. I came back and we just prayed over the whole place and it never happened again. So there was some type of spiritual battle going on there and we fought it with prayer, anointing, and worship. The last thing we can do is fight your battles with one another. Now, I don't mean, like, fight. Me and Trot are going to fight because he would win that battle. And it doesn't mean to judge people and fight. Galatians chapter 6 says this. Live creatively, friends. If someone falls into sin... Forgivingly restore them, saving your critical comments for yourself. Saving your critical comments for yourself, not telling, Trot, did you see what Pastor Erica did this morning? I prayed for her, I prayed for her, but... <laughs> it's funny, but that needs to land. Save your critical comments for yourself. You might be needing forgiveness before the day's end. Stoop down and reach out to those who are oppressed. Share their burdens. And so complete Christ's love. If you think you are too good for that, you are badly deceived. None of you have to do life alone. Nobody in this church, in this city, should have to do life alone. If you have a burden, reach out to somebody. Let them carry your burdens with you. In a few weeks, I've been studying the passage in Mark chapter 2, verse 3, where it talks about, it says, Some men came bringing to Jesus a paralyzed man. He was carried by four of them. I'm thinking it's a big guy if four guys had to carry him. But imagine having that type of friendship where they said, You need to get to Jesus. Not only do you need to get to Jesus, but we'll bring you to Jesus. Not only that, they physically had to pick the brother up and bring him. And then they had to do so much more to get him to Jesus. We'll talk about that in a few weeks. But whatever your burden is, you don't have to do it alone. Christ the Rock wants to be a church where we do stuff together. If you follow our Facebook page, and if you do, you need to start hitting like, because like two people like a post every day, and it takes so much time to post all those things. So please, start liking them. But I always hashtag stuff like, together. Together we're better, because I mean that. There are sitting testimonies in this church because people have come together, they're still here. Carry each other's burdens together. You don't have any excuse to not reach out to people. You can do it with Zoom, FaceTime, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, text messages, phone calls, ding dong. You can do all that and reach out to people. When I'm facing trials, difficult decisions, loneliness, or I need to pray, I reach out to friends, family, church, pastors, and mentors. You can even fight your battles over chicken wings. How many times have we fought our battles over chicken wings? Right? How many times have some of us fought battles over coffee? Now, we're not fighting over the chicken wing. But we're breaking bread together. Sometimes we fight our battles at church picnics or at young adult nights. You can't fight a battle together with somebody if you're not together with somebody. Hear this, nobody has to fight anything alone. 
you can at least reach out to me. I've never not texted any of you back. There's plenty of people in here. When I send out group chats, you don't text back. I won't look at anybody. All right. As the worship team comes forward to get back into worship, we're going to wrap this up. When you're having your coffee and your chicken wings, Matthew 18, 20 says that God will be there. It says when two or three are gathered together because of me, you can be sure I am there in the midst. This is how we fight our battles. We can fight them with the word of God. We can fight them with songs that are soaked in biblical truths. We can fight them with friends. I want to challenge you now. Believe it or not, whether you know it or not, this church is in a battle. This city's in a battle too. Some of you are in a battle. I challenge you in the next month, for all of September, if you can do this, even if it's once a week, if it's once a day, even better. I don't recommend more than once a day. Fast. And it doesn't mean it has to be food. If you really love coffee, Fast coffee one day a week. Hopefully you won't get a headache. If it can be fast breakfast every day or, or one day a week, fast and purposely pray for this church. Pray for both our English and our Portuguese. Pray for our pastors. Pray for our worship team. That spends a lot of time here. I don't know why I'm echoing all of a sudden. Fast. There's power in it. And be selfish. Fast for yourselves too. Fast for your family. Fast for whatever you need God to do. Because the Bible says, when you seek me with all of your heart. And what better way to show God all of it than even fast coffee or something you're into. So I challenge everybody, even on this stage, fast and fight for your church. Amen. Fast and believe God will do something. Like I said, one, one thing a week, and then you can message me. You don't have to message and say, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. But when you see a miracle or a testimony happen, then I want you to text me and tell me, Pastor Rob, this is what happened. As we go back into worship, remember, worship is a weapon that the enemy cannot defeat. Drop to your knees, lift your head, let your voice ring out, and know that you are not surrounded by the enemy anymore. The worship team is going to lead us back into worship. For I think a couple more songs. If you want to come and worship up front, if you want to come and pray up front, the altars are open. God bless you.